Hey Savvy People, it's Savvy Nick here and today I'll continue with episode 22 in the C++ tutorial for beginners. In this episode we'll be covering enums, also known as enumerations. So the basic syntax for a enumeration goes something like this. First you type in the keyword enum followed by some type of name for this enumeration and then inside the curly braces you can define some constant names, however many you want, but I'll just do constant name one, two, three, and then all the way down to some number n. Every constant you make, you will have to separate by a comma here, and this is the basic syntax of an enumeration. So we'll make our own very shortly, but we can reference this. So I'll just comment this out. So an enumeration can be used when you have multiple constant values that could potentially relate to each other. Even further, you could benefit from assigning names to those constants and then referencing those names instead of numbers in your code. So let's give an example for that. But before we do, make sure to support the channel by subscribing below and hitting the notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. Let's create an enumeration for example here. We'll do enum, our keyword for enumeration. And this one I'll call month because I will be typing out the months below. I'll start out by putting Jan, short for January, and I'll just shorten up these months. That way it's easier to type out February, March, so on and so forth until I get down to December. So I've created my first enum here. Why is this actually helpful at all? Well, this helps me reference the months, even though these months can be represented by numbers as well. So in an enumeration, the very first constant always starts out as zero, unless explicitly told to start somewhere else. We'll leave it like this for now. But as we see highlighting this says enum month January is equivalent to zero. And then February one, two, so on, so forth until you get down to December, which is equal to 11. The nice part about this right now is now in our code, if we use this enumeration, instead of using zero through 11, we can also represent these months with this shorthand here that we've defined. So let's give an example here. I'll go down to main where we can use our enumeration. And in order to use it, I need to specify month down here and I'm gonna call this month a selection. So this enumeration is really a data type now, and I said that this selection is of data type month, and the month is an enumeration with all these various different values, which actually represent integers, in this case, zero through 11. One thing that we can't forget, and I almost did, is you need a semicolon here at the end. It's always important to have that. And now I can use the selection of type month here in my code. So I'll just do an if statement and say, if the selection is equal to Jan, then we'll do something. We'll spit out to the console, see out Jan January was chosen. We'll put an end line at the end to make things clean. And we'll run this in a moment. But before we do, we can say selection equal to zero or January, if we want. Let's try zero first. If we compile things, we'll see that we got an error. Well, that's actually what I expected because right now, the compiler doesn't understand how to convert an integer to a month. That's because the data type we gave to selection was month and the various different values that are accepted are only these that we wrote out, Jan, Feb, Mar, and so on and so forth. So I'll set it equal to Jan. And one other thing I notice, I need double equals down here, not just a single. Let's go ahead and rerun this by compile. And I run this time, we see that January was chosen. Great, we made it in our if statement. And if we selected something different, let's say Feb, we would expect not to get this statement here. So let's try again, compile, run, and we got nothing. So things seem to be working just fine. Congratulations, you've made your first enumeration and you can kind of see how this can be fairly nice to know about while programming because imagine just using numbers all over the place in your conditions as well as specifying a selection. Someone else going through this code might not quite understand what kind of comparisons you're doing and what they mean if you just use numbers such as 
such as selection double equal to zero here. So let's see if we are allowed to do this though. So I'm going to set the selection equal to January or Jan. And then I did selection double equal to zero. If it's double equal to zero, it's going to print out the statement. Let's see if this one works. If I compile, no errors, and I run, January was in fact chosen. Why is that the case? If we selected Jan, Jan is in fact one of the members that belongs to month here, and the data type is of month. Well, Jan actually represents a zero anyway, so the compiler understands what you mean here. You're just trying to make a comparison of numbers at the end of the day. And if you went ahead and made it this far, please smash that like button for me. It really does help me out. Let's continue here and let's make this program a little more useful. Let's tell the user what season their month that they chose belongs to. So we can do that a few ways. And since we saw that we can do comparisons to numbers here in our if statement, we might as well take advantage of that. And we'll say it's winter. And we'll make a copy here, paste this four times. And now we'll say spring, summer, and fall. So how do we make this work? Let's check the selection again. So if we say December, January, and February here belong to the winter, we can do if the selection is double equal to December or the selection is less than or equal to February or Feb, that should be enough to check between December and February. Now I'll show a little bit of a different method here later because we could reorganize these months in order to play into our favor by simply moving December to the top of the list, but that's okay for now. This will work just as well. We'll make else ifs out of these two and just specify a else at the very end. So there will be no condition to check here. And now how do we distinguish whether or not it is spring? So spring would be between March and May, according to us. So that would mean between two and four, but instead of confusing things, we can simply just use if the selection is greater than or equal to Mar for March and the selection is less than or equal to May, that means between the months of March and May, it's spring. Awesome. So we're getting close here. We could reuse this one for our next case and just say instead of March to May, if we agree that between June and August, those are the summer months, then we can put June and Aug for August here. And now we have a fairly powerful program that checks the selection that a user gives us and does a comparison to figure out whether or not it's winter, spring, summer, or fall. But one really neat thing is that here now, instead of having numbers which could represent anything, we have a clear definition of what we're checking for. So a month and the various different months that we're checking between. All right, let's just give this a shot real quick. If we compile things and we run, we get it's winter. Well, what did we have here? We had Jan, great. If we do March, just to check things, let's give this a shot, compile, run. Now it's spring, awesome, that's what we would expect. Let's go back and say July this time, that should line up in summer. If we compile and run, it says it's summer, awesome. And finally, let's do something like October for fall. We'll compile and run, and we can see that our enum is working great and our conditions are just fine. If you still haven't already, make sure to go down and smash that like button. We've pretty much learned how to use an enum and what it represents here. Some other things we could have done are, let's say that we didn't like the fact that January was considered zero or the zeroth month. We could do equals one. So what does this do? Well, if you specify the very first constant as initialized to some value here, a whole number, well then everything in line after that follows the suit. So this is one, February now has become two, three, four, so on and so forth. So what happens to our code? Well, nothing really, because with defining this enum, everything has just been adjusted accordingly. There's nothing that really needs to be changed here. This will all still work. Just the enum got adjusted. Another thing we could have done is put December up above. That way we didn't have to check for selection double equal to 
December in this one. We could have just checked to see if the selection was less than February. And if it was, that would have meant that it's winter. You could have imagined. Let's just move this up here. So now here, December is zero. This is one, two, so on and so forth. And now that makes our seasons a little bit easier to check. We can get rid of this and that should work as well. So let's just check. We'll put December in here. Let's compile once more and run things. And it says it's winter. Awesome. So that's convenient. But we could have also changed this to, let's say 20 if we wanted to. What does that mean? Well, this starts out as zero. January now has become 20. And everything following that has done, has also been adjusted. So 21, 22, so on and so forth down to 30. All right. So you're saying, that's nice. Can I also edit these other numbers? Absolutely. So you could set this one, let's say to 30 and this one perhaps to 40 or whatever number that you want. Just know that the preceding number always is incremented by one. So as we see, we have zero for this one. January is becoming 20. February is now 21. March is 30. April is 31. May is 40. June is 41, July is 42, and so on and so forth. Just so you understand how the enum decides its constant values. And just to give you an example of how enums can make stuff easier to read, let's just uh, go back here. We'll change this back to normal. And now that our enum is normal, let's change these to their numbers. So February should equal two, March is three, May is five, June six, August eight, and that should be good enough. So now could you imagine someone looking at your code and looking through these if else if else clauses and trying to figure out what exactly you're trying to do here or to make it even more complicated, get rid of the seasons so they can't even guess what you're trying to output. It's a lot harder to read this way than it would be just using the enumeration with the months that you already specified. Hopefully you understand where these can be useful. And that's about it. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.